abdominals and you're literally right there right in the abdominal cavity looking at like the uterus and all of that stuff you and I when I do it live What's up you guys, Madonna, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to give you guys all of the juicy details of everything I did as a PA student on my women's health rotation. And you know that this is the area that I wanna go into, so I really like dove in and I really wanted to be a part of it and know exactly everything that I could possibly learn in the short period of time, which was four weeks that I had on this rotation in the hospital. So I tried to do a lot and I think I got to do a lot as well. So let's get into the video. Uh, I did a women's health rotation and I'm actually doing two, maybe three women's health rotations just because, again, it's the area that I want to get into. Um, so I have electives that I can choose from and then I would just essentially add that on as my um, next elective. But in my women's health rotation, we had to get there pretty early, like around seven. I'd always get there like a little bit before seven, just in case I wanted to like go eat breakfast and kind of hydrate myself because you never know when like a C-section is gonna happen. You never know when someone's gonna go into labor and you wanna be ready because you might be in the operating room when it's time for lunch and you might miss lunch. So it's always good to have something already there um, and inside of your body so that you're um, you know, a benefit to others and you're not passing out uh, because you aren't hydrated. So I'd do that, I'd get there maybe like 6.30ish and then from that we have sign out so the women's health, the OBGYN PA from the night shift because they work 24 hour shifts and they work three 24 hours in their two weeks. So they only work six times in the month, um, which is really, really cool. So with respect to that, the they would have been, they would have came in on the, the seven o'clock the morning before and then they go all the way to seven o'clock of the next day. So that PA that was on that night will then give report to the new PA that's coming in and the physicians and the NP, NPs, like the nurse midwives, because we're all part of like the, the care of the people on the LND floor. Um, so the nurse certified nurse midwives, they take care of like all of your simple OB cases, um, people that are laboring just vaginal birth and coming to their clinic. And then the PAs usually do all of the cesarean cases um, with the physicians. And also um, something that's kind of in the works is possibly allowing them to go to the clinic because the hospital does have a clinic that they allow some of their patients to come to um, and then they direct their uh, their care from the clinic to the hospital as well. Um, for me, we would run through the cases. We'd get presented on everyone that is either laboring or gave birth or is um, postpartum day one, two, um, one, two, or three, depending on if they had a cesarean or if they did a vaginal birth. We just talk about their numbers, how they're trending, how they're doing, if they were preeclamptic or not, if there was uh, bleeding, postpartum hemorrhage, and if so, how much, then what did we give them? And so we get all of that information because it's essential as you go throughout the rest of the day, how you're gonna direct their care. That sign out usually lasts maybe like 30 or so minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, and then from that, we are free-ish uh, until about nine. What will happen is I will then get um, a list of patients. So in sign up, we have a list of patients, but then I personally get a list of my patients that I'm gonna go and see and make sure that they're doing well. I would go and feel where the fundal height is. Is it below the umbilicus or not? Um, are they bleeding? I would ask them questions like, are you bleeding? Um, if so, are there clots? Um, because you know we expect that clots would start uh, to kind of decrease. So it's important that you ask these questions. And then depending on if I have patients that are actually getting discharged, I would give them the discharge instructions. So you know, tell them about what to look for. If they're cesarean patients, let them know, hey, um, you can take a shower with no baths. Make sure that you're just kind of damping the area clean. Don't 
scrub it because although we put sutures in there, um, if you rub it really hard, you can tear the sutures, that kind of stuff. Signs of infection, signs of postpartum hypertension, all of those things. So we're giving them all of this stuff. And it's so cool because like they're literally my patients that I'm talking to, you know, some of them I've seen in the, like actually get their C-section done and then I've followed them throughout the course of the next three days. So um, it's really cool, I loved it. And then from that, um, I would go to the actual like labor and delivery. So we have like mother baby, but then we have to go over to labor and delivery to see about the patients that are still laboring. Um, and so we'll get another sign out at around like 8.30, 9 o'clock on those patients. And then there in the labor and delivery room we um, floor, we also have a board that actually talks about like who is laboring. Um, we'll have the heart tracings of both the mother and the baby. We'll have um, information on they've gotten Pitocin, um, are they scheduled for a C-section, those type of things. Um, so it's important to also have that information. After we get all of that, then it's again, your free time to kind of go and see any of your other patients. If we get calls for um, ED consults, we have to go to those as well, which is pretty cool because you get to see like some really interesting cases come into the emergency department, but since they're pregnant um, or if they're a woman, um, for the most part, you were the ones that they called. So after that, uh, depending on what is scheduled for the day, C-section or not, then you would go into the C-section. I talked about my general surgery rotation where I would scrub first and then um, pat dry. I don't usually do that um, with my women's health. I literally just go in and I scrub and I walk in wet and then they give me the towel and then I pat dry. I don't know why I don't do the other way, but that's just what I did. So I would do that and then you walk in again, hands in, you get your gloves on, help well, first off, I help the patient. So like we would move the patient to the bed, help the patient on. Um, I'm always there like hugging the patient as they're getting their epidural. Um, and then I'm doing everything else with respect to making sure that they're strapped up and all of that is done. Um, also get my gloves, introduce myself to everybody in the room, make sure that they're aware of who I am introduce myself to the patient and the family prior to going into the OR with them. That's always important because it's like, well, who are you? I don't know you. I've never seen you before in my life. So you want to make sure that you're able to actually introduce yourself to the patients. And then we'll go through the whole like cesarean case where you're cutting, like the physician's cutting and they're retracting and they're passing things. And you're literally right there, right in the abdominal cavity, looking at like the uterus and all of that stuff. Um, um, and then you see them cut through the uterus and pull baby out, baby goes to the nurse. And then from that, you will then start closing. And, and well, you like make sure that you have the placenta, it's all in one place piece like all intact because if there's any remnants of that then it can cause postpartum hemorrhage so we'll make sure that that's intact and then they'll start to close which is partly like where you come in you're retracting because they close like the inner layers first and then from that I can close like the more superficial layer with a subcuticular um, stitch and then we add stereo strips. Some people like um, staples, but a lot of the physicians are using like stereo strips and like a, well, the PAs as well are using stereo strips and a subcuticular uh, suture. And then from that, we just, you know, pat like put the dressing on the wound and then the patient wakes up and we bring them back to um, labor and delivery, uh, whatever room they were in with the baby. And it's like such a cool thing, you know, cause everybody's like, oh, thank you, thank you. And you're like, oh, thank you, welcome. Like you didn't really, you don't really think you did much, but it's cool because you got to be a part of that moment with them. Um, so it's like really happy. And I like these happy moments. I mean, I haven't been on, in on any sad moments, which is great for, well, some sad moments, but not like sad moments while laboring. So um, that's been great for me, but um, you know, I love experiencing the happy moments with them. And I also kind of just did my own thing as well in asking some of the physicians, hey, can I go in on your, um, 
salpingectomy uh, or, you know, for your removal of the fibroids or, you know, somebody may have had like an ectopic and removal of that. So I would do that because I wanted to see those cases because technically the med students are the ones who have to see those cases. Like they get first preference with that because they have a certain amount of cases that they have to see with respect to just GYN cases. But, you know, if the physician doesn't mind, I go in. And sometimes you have to do that, guys. You have to, like, fight for yourself, um, direct your own learning experience. Because, you know, if you're just there and you're quiet, no one's going to do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. So um, I guess, like, note for the day, learn how to fight for yourself, go for it, um, direct your own learning, and um, just be supplemental, but be really like nice about it, okay? All right, so that was it. That was my women's health. I love it, you guys. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm so happy. I really want to like do this in the future, and so like pray for me, y'all, because you know, towards the end of this year, I'm going to be applying to some jobs, and hopefully women's health is one of the jobs that I get hired on for. All right, if you have any other questions for me go ahead and leave it in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching um please follow me on instagram at adonna the pa and i will talk to you guys next time bye